what about making democracy great again? Let's talk about democracy. On top of most democracies, there is a text called a constitution. In that text, someone wrote the main rules of the society. Below the constitution, we find many powers. And today, I would like to put focus on two of them. One of them is the legislative power, and the other one, the executive power. The legislative power lies mostly in the hands of a parliament. It's people who meet, debate, and pass the laws. It means the rules of the society we live in. The executive power is mostly in the hands of a president, of a prime minister, of a chancellor. And they are there for the daily business of politics. They apply the rules. Political science shows us that the background of politician has an impact on how he makes decisions. It means if we would have parliaments filled with uh, only homeless people or poor people, the parliaments would make pass more laws in favor of this group in the population. Nowadays, the problem is that we have many groups, many important groups, that are underrepresented in the parliament. Just think about women, young people, old people, people with low income, people without any university degree. And that's an issue, because in the parliament, most of the people share the same profile, and we lack diversity. Most of people think or say that everyone can do politics, can get involved and be elected. But in fact, it's like to say that everyone can go to the moon or everyone can drive an expensive car. It's true in theory, but not in the reality. I made a small test in Switzerland, and I found out that from the adult population, we have only 0.012% of the population who can get access to a seat in Parliament. And I find myself that it's uh, totally contradictory with the very own concept of democracy, demos, the people. Who of you would like to drive an expensive car on the moon? Please raise the hand. You see, <laughs> many candidates, that's good. Now, in the current system, I will show you how to win an election. First, you have to go in, into a main political party in your country, one of the major ones. Then the second step is to become very popular in that party, so that your friends will put you on top of the list for the next elections. You will get access to media, you will get access to a fat budget for yourself, marketing campaign, and you, have, you will have a huge advantage compared to the other candidates, the so-called small candidates. We are on maybe different down the list, or they are in different party minor parties. What you need, in fact, the problem is not that normal people are not in interested in politics. The problem is that the top-down mechanism of the political parties doesn't allow us to have a really inclusive and participative democracy. It's even worse, because elections is a system where populism and mass manipulation gives an advantage to the candidates who use these tools. Just think about the Cambridge Analytics scandal. Isn't that against the values of democracy? Think about it. Election looks like open and fair, but in fact, they give us just the illusion of choice, the illusion of participation. What we do as a voter is just to validate the choice, the pre-selection of the political parties. That's it. So we see we are in the stone age of democracy. And we need a big change, not a small change, not like creating a new party, because it was done many times already, and it didn't affect a lot. We have to step back. 
we have to have the overview to think meta and to find a systemic solution to that systemic problematic. Let's talk about alternatives or ideas for the future of democracy. One of those powerful ideas, empowerment. Imagine a world where, from the beginning of their life, people get involved in the society. We make them feel important. We make them feel in charge of the world they live in. We help them through different panels, programs, to, to have the right and to, to dare to do that. And already today, the good news is that we have many experiments in many countries where normal citizens help politicians or help the society to find solutions. Because that's the problem. We need diversity in the way of thinking too. And if we have only people with the same profile, we will not reach that diversity. Empowerment brings us to the concept of sharing power. I think that everyone knows how dangerous it can be to give too much power to one person. It's too risky. The best is to share the power. When you look at the executive, in Switzerland, the country I come from, we have a quite nice idea. The executive power is not the matter of one person. It's shared between seven federal councillors that comes from different political parties different cultural backgrounds, they don't speak the same language, and they have to find solutions together. And that's in that spirit that I see the future of democracy. Elections again, they cost a lot. For the last US presidential elections, we spent, I mean humankind spent, for billions. Imagine, for billions. And we are not even able to be sure that the result we get is really a competent person in office. Maybe we should change something. And there is another great idea going on. It's uh, to change the concept, the system of election with the system of selection, which would seem logical. Every company do that. We would assess the skills of the candidates, make a real selection. It would reduce the cost and we would have a better result. Let's back, go back to the legislative power, the parliament. There we said that we need diversity. But how we, ch we choose the, the people, the right citizen to sit in parliament and to reach diversity? In fact, the very own concept of democracy, the one the ancient Greeks uh, created to 1,500 years ago, they thought that every citizen is the right citizen. And that's why it's important to invest in citizenship programs to involve citizens for the future. There is a, a solution. Who knows, by the way, you can raise your hand, what is sortition? I know. <laughs> Good, oh, there are hands. That's very good. Sortition is a very old concept. It was implemented in the first democracy, the Athenians. And it's just to randomly pick up people, citizens, to fill the parliament. It's really easy. It would replace elections. Every citizen would have equal chances to be chosen, to have a role in his life in Greece. 60% of the people got such a mandate during their lifetime. And it's easy to implement. It doesn't cost a lot. You don't need to have money. You don't need to have fake news. You don't need to manipulate masses. And we will finally end with this uh, beauty contest we call elections. Nowadays, the politicians uh, work too much. They have too many things to do, and either they choose to work really hard or they hire some external specialists, experts, who don't always give advice for the common good, and that's a problem. 
Now imagine that overnight all these politicians go away to raise sheep in a remote area. The parliament is no more there, but we have leg legislative issues to solve. So implementing sortition, we would um, select people in this room or in the population to set up a special citizen commission to handle this issue. And the future of democracy would be, we have one issue, we select one citizen panel, and for the next issue, it will be other citizens we will debate. And the concept is really easy. It's the citizens are neutral in the middle, they represent some kind of diversity, and they listen to the different experts all around. And then they debate again, and they choose one of the options. This is about sheep, to relax a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. My guess and my hope is that really this system we live in, based on competition and ego, will be replaced soon by this concept of empowering, empowerment, bringing more diversity, collaboration. The world needs it. That's really a positive way of thinking, and I'm sure the next generation will try it, like it, and spread it like us. Thank you very much.